If you caught the last video, you might remember I'd just gotten a 4-inch import vise. Maybe you'd like to stick around and talk about it. I actually bought this vise for the CNC router. But before we get into that, I just wanted to take a moment to thank the kind viewers who inquired about my mill. Now, I'm not going to stand here and lie to you. It's hard not having a mill. I haven't found a replacement I like just yet, but I do appreciate you asking. The flowers and the fruit baskets were especially nice. My wife also thanks you, and she wanted me to let you know that getting another mill in here has become her number one priority. Okay, uh, the vise. This is a Vertex 4-inch milling machine vise. I only unpacked it about a week ago. I haven't even bothered to get all the earwax off of it yet. As you can see, this is an Ang fixed vise which in my opinion has the advantage over an ang lock vise in that when you're working it makes it a bit easier to maneuver around patent infringement issues. Now this isn't going to be an import bashing video about how upset I am that I didn't get a brand new Kurt equivalent for less than $100. I knew exactly what I was getting into when I bought this. I really had no intention of making a video about this thing or doing anything with it at all other than throwing it on a CNC bed and putting it to work. But check out what this vise came with. A quality report. A test report for precision machine vice. I don't know about you, but I see something like this and it's just begging to get checked out. Let's see if it's true. Good for a two horsepower. I got my warranty card. Can you read that? It specifically states right there, don't put your in a vice. Be sure to take full advantage of it, you know, before the tables turn. It did a pretty good job. So let's have a look at this test report. Again, it's the VA4 and it looks like this thing's about three years old. Or at least it was tested three years ago. So at first blush, those numbers look pretty good. This is in millimeters, so that's what, four tenths? on parallelism, four tenths on squareness, and four and it's six tenths on jaw plate parallelism. But note this is per 100 millimeters. So this number is good every four inches or so. Aren't these things usually written in by hand? I suppose they just print thousands of these and just match the certificate up to the appropriate vice. You'll notice there's no real serial number or anything to attach this report to this specific vice. So I assume they just make a thousand of these and then just sort them according to how well they happen to have turned out and match that up with one of these certs. Let's check this first one out. This one's easy. Parallelism from bottom of bed to running surface. Over 100 millimeters, that should be 4 tenths. If I measure the longest distance here, well, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's say that's to the start of the fixed jaw. We'll call that 250 millimeters. So that's two and a half times that four tenths, you know, to stay within this JIS one grade. That comes out to what? One, one thou. That's pretty good. So let's check to see if we're in one thou parallelism between these top surfaces and the bottom surface. So I don't know about you folks, but I find my surface plate to be a great place to keep my, you know, my cell phone and my car keys and my spare change. Bear with me just a moment while I get all the lemon soda off of this thing. So 
So I tried to just wipe this down as best I could and just blew it off with the air compressor. So the bottom of this doesn't seem exceedingly flat. This isn't very scientific, but you tend to get to know your surface plate and what really flat parts feel like. Maybe we'll blue it just to get a look at the bottom. So I don't believe my eyes. I'll bring in for a closer look. I was not expecting that. That's a half thou indicator. I think I'm gonna have to break out the tenths indicator. What the? I don't know what to say, I'm speechless. I mean, you saw that, it looks like this side's a little high, but within each rail, I'm getting essentially zero indicator movement. Let's see if we can check the height difference between those two. So that's zero. And that's what, two, three tenths? We got a camera between me and the indicator there. This surface does have a little bit of a lean in towards the center. This one looks pretty good. It'd be nice to have some way to bolt this thing down. If you could imagine bolting this to the surface plate and repeating these measurements with the base of this vise, you know, pulled down to the surface. But let's blow up the plate and just see how that surface looks. This is just some Prussian blue. And I've got a wee bit of acetone down there. I just want to thin this out. All right, so the acetone did nothing at all, and I switched to mineral spirits. Oh, I look like some kind of chemist here. So this is always a little bit tricky for me. If, if you don't get just the thinnest of layers of blue on there, meaning if you lay it on thick in any particular area, reading the tea leaves gets a little complicated. For kicks, I'm hitting the top side too. I know how well you can see that on camera. There are low spots right in here. There are a couple smaller islands. I mean, I'm no cartographer, but that doesn't look too bad. I mean, a large unsupported spot here, but we've got full contact on both sides right where the uh, bolts go. See what the other side looks like. I mean, I should have re-blued the plate, but again, for how thin the blue is and what I paid for this, I don't know if I can much complain. All right, let's try the next one. We're looking at squareness, front jaw plate to body running surface. Now I'm starting to second guess myself on what this actually means. All right, so I'm pretty sure they mean the squareness of the jaw to this top surface. For a second there, I thought they were talking about squareness to the length. But what would that even mean? I mean, you can tram the vise in. But I thought perhaps they were talking about some kind of, you know, alignment to the key slots below it, or that key in the back. But I'm going to go with this. That seems to make sense. Bear with me, I haven't had lunch yet. So I'm going to use my indicator to measure how square this is. First I want to get it set up. We don't have a lot of height to work with here. I just want to get this set up so I'm within range. Okay, scratch that. I couldn't get this indicator low enough without fouling the body of the uh, surface gauge. So I broke out a smaller one. My smaller one doesn't have a bumper like the larger one does. So I'm just going to use a little ball bearing and nest it just sort of in that crotch there. And I think everybody knows the drill here. I'm just gonna use that as a bumper and zero my indicator up against the known square surface. Now is my reference square square? To be honest, I have no idea. You gotta draw the line in the sand somewhere. 
Can't go through life having trust issues. I suppose I could have used my other surface gauge and just put like a one, two, three block or a gauge block in there, but I think the less you introduce into a setup like this, the better. So I'm reading four tenths. Let's try the other side. I can't get in everywhere, obviously, because of this hollow and the size of the uh, surface gauge. I've got about five tenths here. I want to just recheck this side and make sure I'm not dropping into that countersink for the uh, jaw mounting screws. Yeah, about four to five. I'm just going to recheck this and make sure I haven't bumped anything around. It's about a tenth high. Yeah, three to four tenths is what I'd call this thing. Let's say three to five, just to keep me honest. This is a neat little surface gauge, but the adjustments aren't as fluid as they are in the Starrett. I think this might be a brown and sharp. I mean, it's really nice and handy to have. It, again, it's just not as fluid. Maybe just because I don't use it as much. All right, so this is actually measuring worse than what the certificate, the test report says. I mean, we're matching the four tenths, but according to this piece of paper, that's over 100 millimeters. And we were probably over 20. So you'd have to multiply our number by five. You could do the maths there. Sorry, I hate that word when people say maths. A little pet peeve of mine. I'm not saying it's not correct. I suppose mathematics. Is mathematics plural? I mean, there's an S on it. For the record, I think the plural of math is math. I mean, if you were going to do a lot of additions, you wouldn't call it ads, would you? You'd say add. I've got a lot of add to do. That sounds perfectly normal. Anyway, last one, parallelism. When clamping gauge block to jaw plate parallelism. And that's the worst one, of course. You know, depending on the, uh, the tolerances they have in their whole ang fixed geometry to keep those jaws down in parallel or parallel when they're down. Let's see if we can figure out a way to measure that. You know what, new day, new perspective. I started to wonder if maybe I didn't do as great a job as I could have cleaning up under here before I put this fixed jaw in place. So I thought I'd have a look, maybe debar this key and try this squareness measurement again. Probably can't see it in that view, but I've also raised the indicator up as far as I could, so I'm measuring the total height of the jaw. And I've just re-zeroed. If you can't read that, that zero and then swinging either way, it falls off. That's six tenths. Again, six, seven tenths. This is seven and this is six. So those are about the same numbers we were getting before. I mean, we were in the three to four and now we're up to six to seven, but we are also, I don't know, 20, 30% higher up on the jaw. But now I'm just curious what the source of that error is. I'm gonna stone these two surfaces and check the thickness of this jaw with a micrometer. See if I can't get an idea of where that's coming from. Okay, so here's what's happening. The Fixed jaw checks out. It's actually pretty darn good. It's parallel and flat. And the error seems to be coming from the supporting block for the fixed jaw on the back. There's the five, five and a half tenths. And by the time it comes up another 200 thou, I guess that's getting us to uh, six, seven tenths. So I'd suppose the question now is, can I find where that source of error is coming from? And can I fix it? And maybe if it's worth it or not. I usually try not to ask those kind of questions. So this is the uh, support for the fixed jaw. There's the slot that keys into the body of the vise. And this is the surface we just measured as being, as participating in the out of squareness. So now I've actually already measured this. And these two sides are flat and parallel. So the only thing that leaves now is this bottom face that clamps up against the body of the uh, vise. All right, well, that's kind of a bummer and that this part checks out perfect. I was hoping it was here since the two adjacent faces are really nice. 
it would have been a cakewalk to just throw this on the grinder and clean up this surface. But you know what I think it is? Recall when we blew the top? I think we had a low spot up in this corner. I'll have to go back through and have a look at the footage. So when the fixed jaw gets clamped on, it's pulled out of square by that surface on the vice body. That also explains why we were getting two different readings from one side to the other. We were consistently getting a tenth or two further out of square on this side. So I put the vise back together. And given that we're out of spec on two here on the squareness, I don't think I'm even going to bother with the parallelism between the two jaws. I'm just going to do a couple of final touchy-feely sort of tests. So this is probably one of my best one, two, three blocks. I'm not really going to tighten this, just to... That's pretty good. Part of me was expecting this side to pull up. And the other thing I'd like to try is to check out just how much this movable jaw will lift. Looks like I can get that to move about a half a thou. The front moves the same amount. What does that mean? So I think that does it for this video, and I mean, my apologies. I really was expecting this to turn into a bit of a small project. I thought maybe we could do some grinding and some measuring. Heck, I even entertained scraping this in. But I'm quite surprised with how this turned out. I mean, you guys saw the numbers. It didn't hit the spec sheet, but for what I'm doing with it, for something around $150, I think things turned out pretty well. If this were a six inch, or maybe for a larger milling machine, let's say a primary milling machine, I'd probably go the extra mile and try to get the small errors we saw out of this. But like I said, for what it's going to be doing, I think I'm going to leave well enough alone. So again, I apologize this didn't turn into a project. I guess I just struck out with this vice. I'll just put this up as a short shoot-in-the-poop installment. Thanks for watching.